Hello, welcome to this webinar about flows. I am Bart Janssens. And I am Benoit Marinus. Our department focuses on the relation between mechanical devices and the environment and on the performance, stability and technology of mobile platforms. But today we'll focus on the research units on fluid dynamics and mobility and propulsion. Our daily business is about reality. But of course we have models for it. And those models consist mainly of three equations. The first one being the conservation of mass. The second one is the conservation of momentum. It has more practical implication for us since it allows to compute the forces exerted by and to a fluid by external objects. So we can compute the thrust from an aircraft or the drag on a bullet. Finally, we have the equation of conservation of energy, uh, which is, has practical implications when the flow becomes compressible. So that means when we go to transonic or supersonic flow and also to calculate all kinds of thermal and energy exchanges, for example, the temperature in the combustion chamber of a jet engine. In the research unit fluid dynamics, we focus on the dispersion of pollutants, on acoustics and on momentum and energy in flows. The first project in the fluid dynamics research unit uh, is about the ordnance disposal that happens in pool capella. So the objective is to create a large data set regarding the particles that are dispersed by the explosions that happen daily in pool capella and to do data-based modeling based on this large data set. The applications here are health and safety of the on-site personnel and also the estimation of uh, terrorist uh, attack impacts. This research is conduct conducted by Mrs. Pierret Atikpo. We use several techniques in this project. One of them is uh, image processing, where we can track the shape of a cloud filmed by a high-speed camera. The second technique is the optical particle counter, which allows us to measure with high accuracy the concentration of particles in open air. A second project is about uh, CBRN dispersion and response modeling in the cloud. So here the objective is to get a fast, large-scale model that we can run immediately after uh, an accident or uh, an attack has happened. A particular aspect about this project is that it runs on the cloud services of the European Weather Forecasting Service which means that we have immediate and up-to-date access of global forecast data so we can simulate an attack. In the confined project, we try to study how the motion of an, a metro train affects the movement of air in a subway station. So we can better predict how dispersants, pollutants uh, released during an attack would be moving in such a complex system. What you see here are on-site velocity measurements on the subway platform during operations conducted by our researcher, Mrs. Laureline Fogier. She also did numerical simulations and you see there are two different receiver placed on the platform at human height so we can really predict what human beings would be confronted to. In the rescues project, we designed a flow modulator and were able to successfully breathe two patients with one ventilator while maintaining the highest medical standards. We teamed up with a team of medical doctors and conducted in vivo and in vitro measurements. But in the end, this is yet just another flow problem. In the Milsound project, the researcher Guido Bilot is looking at the propagation of high-intensity non-linear sound such as from howitzers and other combat hardware. As you can see on the animation, he is able to predict numerically the on-site measurements for the propagation of that very specific sound wave. Doing so, we are able to make better models for uh, sur the surrounding communities and make an assessment of mitigation measures. In the FACTS project, we are conducting measurements around our air bases to try to quantify the exposure to jet noise. 
It is another example of the propagation of high-intensity nonlinear sound waves, and we are dealing with the potential impacts for the surrounding communities in close coordination with our F35 program office. It is yet again a flow problem, this time an overpressure and underpressure problem when we deal with the potential damage to buildings from sonic booms. This often occurs upon requests from surrounding communities. In this case, we had to measure pressure losses when modifying ducts and filters on board our mine hunting vessels. For this purpose, we had to install specific measurement equipment. In this example, we had to deal again with pressure losses and flow rates when using extension hoses as they do on board our transport aircraft in the cargo hold. As you can see, we had to design a specific test bench for this purpose and conducted several measurements involving different personnel to breathe through the system and provide the required measurements. And in this last example, we use our wind tunnels, instruments and methodology to make the calibration of the anemometers that are used on a daily basis by the Royal Meteorological Institute and the Meteo Wing for your weather forecasts. In the research unit on mobility and propulsion, we focus on air, sea and land vehicles. Two projects focus on high altitude platform systems in close collaboration with industry in Belgium. High altitude platform systems are aircraft typically flying above 16 km altitude in our stratosphere. They generally remain there for longer than 7 days in a row. And so this is very demanding aerodynamics because the air is thin and the need for efficiency is extremely high. Such platforms can be used as ISR platforms or communications hub. So they have a lot of military relevance and can be more easily maneuvered and changed than satellites. In the tailored high altitude propeller project, Nicolas Mourousias and Ahmed Malim are using particle swarm optimization techniques as illustrated here to conduct the optimization of future propeller blades for those high altitude operations. We have a very large design space. Here you see a sensitivity study. So on the left hand side you have performance parameters such as efficiency and takeoff thrust. And on the bottom we have our 30 design variables. Using those sensitivities we try to find optimal shapes that are not only good in terms of aerodynamics. And here you see the pressure distribution on such an optimized blade. But we need good aerodynamics, that means also a high efficiency, but the blades need also to withstand the very harsh operating conditions and these are centrifugal forces and a truss that makes for bending. So in the end we need to compute, um, to model the fluid structure interaction with new manufacturing techniques in the blades. Those new techniques involve 3D printing, but for that we had to um, validate the numerical model for such um, manufacture of blades. And this is what you see here on those two graphs where we have tensile and bending tests on blade substitutes and we compared the numerical results with those from tensile and bending experiments that are sometimes conducted at minus 60 degrees Celsius for the samples. In the Nelcho project, we focus on the aerodynamics of the wing of such a high altitude platform system. In fact, we intend to fly our own experiment, that is an instrumented wing sleeve that will be flown in the stratosphere in collaboration with our industrial partners. To conduct such experiments, we need several techniques. So we use pressure and temperature sensitive paints. We also use infrared thermography as you can see here on this left image. So you have on the left hand side the leading edge, on the right hand side the trailing edge. And then you see here a turbulent 
uh, cone. That is because the heat transfer in the turbulent flow is enhanced and is very different from the heat transfer in a laminar flow. Next to that, we conduct numerical simulations. And so we have various techniques that allow us to grasp the complexity of such a flow. While Mr. Matja Avirovic handles the experimental part that was explained in the previous slides, we also have a second researcher, Mr. Carlo Brunelli, who works on the numerical part. Indeed, given the high altitude, low Reynolds number flow of this problem, it provides excellent opportunities to develop new uh, numerical methods that capture this partic particular type of flow more accurately. What we aim to do is to develop a new finite element method, which we will implement in the Julia programming language, that is particularly suitable to the kind of flow that we have on hand here. On the image on the right here, you can see already one possible uh, shape of the wing profile that we intend to study, where our new method already predicts a kind of laminar separation bubble that we hope to verify uh, experimentally using the, both the in-flight and wind tunnel testing of the experimental part of the project. In the SuperAS3 project, we collaborate with the Department of Ballistics and intend to commission our newly acquired supersonic wind tunnel. The supersonic wind tunnel is an idea to complement the facilities of the Department of Ballistics and Weapon Systems. We can provide in a supersonic wind tunnel with an instrumented test section and steady flow conditions that they cannot have when firing. We intend to study the effects of scale and uh, presence of side, side walls on small diameter projectiles such as bullets. As you can see on the graph showing the drag coefficient and in yellow the range for the unsteady live firings from the ballistics department, the wind tunnel shown in blue will provide very steady conditions at different Mach numbers so we can later perform shape optimizations. Up to now, we dealt with a lot of air, but we also deal with water. This adds an extra numerical challenge in this case, because there is a free surface between the body of water and the surrounding air. In the department, we conducted several works to try to support the Navy and their ships. One of them was to develop a role stability code that, is, that allows us to assess the role stability of ships but we also do numerical simulations of the flow around ships. This leads to dynamic stability questions as is shown in this animation of a ship traveling through waves and so we see the longitudinal stability there. But we can also simply assess the pressure signature of a ship traveling through a minefield as certain mines use that pressure signature to detonate. Or here we have the pressure distribution around ship propellers. One last example of such flow problems we dealt with is the introduction of hull vanes in close collaboration with the company, which has the same name by the way. Those hull vanes placed behind and under the hull of the ship uh, increase the efficiency of the hull and diminish the wave pattern as you can see on this image. We also studied non-lethal and lethal projectiles. In this case, we tried to come up with the pressure distribution around them as they can be used for trajectory predictions by the ballistics department. What you see here, for example, are uh, numerical simulations of the pressure and skin friction distribution around such a non-lethal projectile. And then we used, again, infrared tomography to assess the state of the boundary layer and also what we call all flow vi visualization. So we put little pigments in some oil that is blown away by the flow. And the pigments stay on the body, revealing uh, the streamlines around that projectile. We also put the same projectile here in our wind tunnel and perform force measurements, which are then compared on these graphs with the numerical predictions, and these help to validate the numerical models. In this 
project related to infrastructure, we had to monitor the temperature, wind velocity, but also the vibrations, the acceleration occurring during startup and taxiing out of a fighter aircraft from a shelter at a special position where future uh, surveillance equipment would be installed. Another classical application of aerodynamics is the study of the flow around cars. More specifically, we are interested in the drag force on the car, as reducing the drag force will also reduce the fuel consumption of the car. However, in this particular case, the F Belgian Federal Police asked for support in assessing the stability of a car when it is fitted with a light bar on top, as is typical for a police car. So we applied our knowledge in aerodynamics to make numerical simulations of the police car that was under study, which in this case uh, was made with a 3D scan, which we then imported into our computational fluid dynamics software. And after a simulation on the cluster, here for example at a velocity of 200 km per hour, we could use the results from the flow field in order to calculate the forces and the moments on the car and to assess the stability while driving the car. In the final part of our presentation, we wanted to show some of the techniques that we use in uh, all of our projects. The techniques can be catalogued into two categories. One is the numerical part, where we use our computing cluster as, as seen here on the picture. So we have both a CPU cluster and a dedicated GPU component consisting of an NVIDIA DGX station. For the experimental part, we have uh, an extensive laboratory available where we can apply different kinds of techniques. Regarding the numerical uh, techniques that we use on our computing cluster, we make use of both commercial software such as Star CCM Plus and Fluent and in-house developed software. Regarding commercial software, we actually uh, have several packages available to us, for example, Star CCM Plus and Fluent. In the car project, we used uh, Star CCM Plus, but um, for some other projects, other commercial codes are more suitable, which is why we need uh, several packages to be available for our department. Regarding in-house developed software, we have extensive experience developing C++ code, but have recently uh, changed over to the Julia programming language, where we continue our work to develop finite element codes for fluid mechanics applications. Remember that in the beginning of this webinar, we talked about the conservation equations, and here in the screenshot, you can see an example of the nu uh, numerical implementation in Julia code of these conservation equations. Modern coding techniques allow us to stay quite close in formulation uh, of our code. We stay quite close to the uh, mathematical formulation of the equations. So this in the end results in code that is easier to read and we hope that it will also result in more people being able to work on the code and in the end result in better code. The first technique I want to discuss is the experimental technique of particle image velocimetry. As you can see here from the video on the right, which shows a moving plaque mimicking a footstep, we can get real-time footage in a plane of the velocity distribution in a flow. So how does that work? Does that work? The idea is that we can somehow film the flow using a camera, but of course we hit the problem here that airflow typically is invisible to the eye. So the first thing that we need to do is make the flow visible. And so this we do by injecting small particles, typically uh, kind of oil droplets, into the flow. If we then have a light source that can eliminate these particles, we can render the flow visible. In the case of particle image velocimetry, we use very small droplets so that they can almost perfectly follow the flow that we want to study, so we need a lot of light to make these particles show up in the flow. In order to get a highly concentrated uh, light in the flow, we typically make use of uh, a laser as light source. So this laser, which typically results 
and a beam uh, coming out of the laser itself uh, needs to be uh, transformed into a light sheet which is done typically using a cylindrical lens. Once we have an, a plane, a thin plane that is illuminated by a, a laser light sheet, we can start filming this using a camera. We can either use just one single camera to measure only two components of the velocity, or we can use two cameras to measure three components of the velocity, still limited to one plane that is illuminated by the laser. So the idea is then that we will take a picture of the group of particles at the time uh, step t and then look at this, uh, take a second picture, a time step delta t later. So we know the time delay between two pictures and we can then compare these two pictures of small dots in the image in order to deduce the movement of these dots and if we have both the distance over which the particles moved and the time between the images we can deduce a velocity field in two dimensions of uh, our problem under study. A second technique involving lasers is the so-called laser doppler velocimetry, velocimetry technique. So both this technique and the previous particle image velocimetry technique, both of these techniques are what we call non-intrusive measurements because we only inject small particles into the flow which we assume to have no effect on the flow itself and we don't need to introduce any physical instruments into the flow. So how does LDV or laser doppler velocimetry work? It's based on observing the Doppler effect of light reflecting off a moving particle. At least that's the theory. In practice it works by intersecting different laser beams and making use of the interference pattern that appears at the intersection of these beams. So that means that while this technique um, is highly accurate and is based on physical principles, so it does not require any calibration, Unlike the PIV technique, here we are limited to measuring in one single point. So it's a technique at high frequency, but only limited to one single point. Another technique that we can use at a single point is the hot wire, which is the second technique that's listed here. So in this case, it is an intrusive technique because we need to introduce an instrument into the flow. In this case it will be a very thin wire that is heated using an electric current and this heated wire will then be cooled down by the flow and so by keeping the wire at a constant temperature by changing the current we can get an idea from this current change what will be the velocity of the flow around the wire. Of course this is a technique that requires careful calibration in order to be effective. Another technique that we can use is the thermal camera. So a thermal camera when pointed at for example a wing profile can give us an idea of the temperature distribution over this wing profile and it will give us an idea of which zones of the flow around the airfoil are turbulent and laminar for example. Then perhaps the two most fundamental techniques I left uh, as, a, as the last techniques so a first technique is the aerodynamic balance, uh, in which case we will mount, for example, a wing profile on this aerodynamic balance and immediately measure the forces such as lift and drag that are exerted on this profile. So this gives us direct feedback on, for example, the shape of the profile, what uh, will be its effect on the aerodynamic forces. And then finally, we have the classic pitot tube, whereby measuring uh, static and uh, total pressure, we can immediately deduce the velocity of an incompressible flow. Flows are part of our daily lives and yes, they can be very challenging sometimes. Just think along the course of one day of how many different flows and complex flows you encounter. We use various techniques to try to understand them either from the numerical or the experimental side. The flows take us in many different domains, but the common thing Bart and I have are flows.